Hi everybody, this is Mr. Folly, and welcome to Podcast 6.1, but I really want to say, Happy Thanksgiving! So I hope you're enjoying that, and having a great Thanksgiving, and you're in your trip to fan happiness, and watching football, or whatever it is you do that evening. Well, you want to describe characteristics, terminology, and symbols of chemical e- equations, write word equations, and balanced formula equations. So balancing equations, maybe you've done it before and thought it was hard or easy, we'll make it easy for you either way. Explain how a balanced chemical reaction illustrates the law of conservation of mass, and I better make sure that I say that. So, All right, so what is a chemical equation? A chemical equation is an equation, or a little arrow sign thing, that uses symbols to represent a chemical reaction. So this, if you remember, carbon dioxide, water, I know what that is, makes sugar and oxygen. Hey, I know this. This is another way to write photosynthesis. Okay, so it's kind of like anti-digestion. So there's my little fishy with the awkwardness here. What are reactants and products? Reactants are substances that are used up in a chemical reaction. They are on the left. And products are substances that are made in a chemical reaction. They are on the right. Okay. So let's label them. We've got that same thing right here. This guy right here would be a reactant, reactant, product, product. It's just that simple, and I think you've got it. Symbols and their English translations. Now I can put English like it's that different than anything else. Little g stands for gas, which is what happens when you eat too much turkey and things. L is a liquid. S is a solid. Aqueous is not the same as a liquid. A liquid is pure, and it's like something that's melted or condensed, so it's just that state of matter. Whereas aqueous is something that is dissolved in water. So if you're dissolved in water, you are a homogeneous solution. And if I say plus, that means reacts with or combined with or something like that. Um, and then H2SO4, if I have something riding on the arrow like this, is in the presence of, and that is a catalyst. And a catalyst is something that is not a reactant nor a product, but speeds up the reaction. So what it does, my analogy for this is imagine that you're having Thanksgiving in outer space because you're an astronaut. And one of these little astronaut guys here has a loaf of bread. So astronaut, uh, astronaut, loaf of bread, and he wants to cut the loaf of bread with his knife that every astronaut carries. Now, if he's out in outer space and doesn't have anything to cut his baguette with, then the his goal is to just cut it so he can eventually wiggle and cut off a slice of bread. But if he has a table, a table is not necessary to cut the loaf of bread, but it will make the cutting of the bread so much faster. Chop, 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 chop. Ah, oh, there's my finger. Oh, explosive decompression. Ah, no more astronaut. Um, this arrow means to produce or yields or any of the other things that means to produce. Put the equation below into words. Now, you don't need to put the coefficients into the equation, but you should be able to name these things. <gasps> name them, yes, name them. Calcium oxide. Now, if you do this and say calcium oxide solid, let me introduce you to English in America, where we put our adjectives before our nouns. So we would say something like solid calcium oxide reacts with, oh look, reacts with, that's the plus sign, hydrogen gas. Remember how that says to form, right? To form. Ooh. CA is calcium, which is a metal, so I don't use prefixes. OH is uh, hydroxide. But then I see calcium hydroxide aqueous and go, hmm, oh, I really should have put aqueous calcium hydroxide in there. Put the equation below into words. (laughs) So solid... 
copper to oxide. Oh, the naming stuff, I hope it's coming back. Um, combines with, just to be a little different, liquid water. And yeah, you have to say liquid water, even though the default for water means liquid. To form copper. And again, remember, copper is a Roman metal, so I needed this Roman numeral in here. So this right here means copper is plus 2 because hydroxide is minus 1. Copper 2 hydroxide. Oops, and look what I forgot to do. To form aqueous copper 2 hydroxide. And we're all done. Put the words below into a chemical equation. This is a little easier. Hydrogen gas. Hey, that's a little easier. H2 little g. Reacts with, that's plus sign. Oxygen gas, that's O2, little g. Now, why are my twos here? Oh, they're diatomic elements. Now I know why we did all that naming stuff before. To produce, that's yields, water, H2O. Hey, that's nice. Okay, so our words are getting um, better and better at translating. Put the words below into a chemical equation. <laughs> Solid magnesium. Magnesium is mg, little s. Reacts with, that's plus, oxygen gas, O2, little g, in the presence of manganese. Now, in, that, in the presence of means it's a catalyst. So, Mn, to produce, and that's the arrow thing, magnesium oxide, magnesium oxide. Go to my periodic table, magnesium's in my plus 2 column, oxygen's in my minus 2 column, so it is MgO. And it says solid, so I put a solid, and I keep on trucking. Now, if you noticed before, if you look at this, where did that other oxygen go? Hmm. So we have to balance these equations, much like balancing a seesaw. So you can teeter-totter, boop, 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 boop. See how two of those green things or brown things or whatever they are, and one big purple, it would still balance with these two guys. Okay. The number of atoms belonging to each element is the same on both sides of the seesaw. Therefore, it is balanced. Therefore, it is the same mass. Okay, So this balancing equation shows the law of conservation of mass because if it's balanced, this is the equation, you've balanced the mass, and no mass is lost. Reactants and products then balance. My reactants are right here, iron, iron and S, and I get iron 3 sulfide. Okay, Remember, your products are on the right, and reactants are on the left. So if I want to balance this, um, I write Fe equals, and I have one of them, and S equals, and I have one of them. And on this side, Fe equals 1, and S equals, oh, it doesn't equal 1, how silly, equals 2, and S equals 3. Now this is a nice, easy balancing one, because you can see your irons don't match up. So you want to have 2 here, I put a 2 here. The 2 only affects the first one up to the plus. And I want 3 sulfurs, so I put a 3 right there. Coefficients, those numbers right in front of them, these are coefficients. Except for I forgot to put my 3 here. Coefficient is a multiplier that is placed in front of a compound in a chemical reaction. So two HCLs means you have an HCL and another HCL. And if you don't have a coefficient, that means you have one, not zero. Balance these guys. Show an atom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fancy pants word to make the little columns. H equals 2. O equals 2. H equals 2. O equals 1. So it doesn't balance is my oxygens. If I throw a 2 here, notice how it messes things up. Gives me a 4 and a 2. Then to get 4 hydrogens on this side, I put a 2 right here. 2 times 2 is 4. And again, this is multiplied, not added. Okay? N2 and H2 makes NH3. N equals 2. H equals 2. N equals 1. H equals 3. So if I start by balancing my nitrogens, I can put a 2 here, which gives me 2 nitrogens, and six hydrogens. So my nitrogens are good, but my hydrogens aren't. So what times two equals six? Three. Balance these. Now, doing that for those earlier ones, if you've balanced before, seemed to be a lot of busy work. This one, hopefully, will be a little bit tougher for this. So I'm going to have carbon is four, hydrogen is ten, oxygen is dose. Carbon one, hydrogen two, Oxygen, two, uh, three, uh, oh, I have them in two spots. Isn't that tricky? Okay. So starting at the top, my carbons are messed up. 
So I'll put a 4 here. It gives me 8. No, it doesn't. It gives me 4 carbons and 8 plus 1, 9 oxygens. Okay. The next thing I want to balance is the hydrogens. So to balance my hydrogens, I put a 5 here. And that gives me 10 hydrogens and 8 plus 5, 13 oxygens. So what do I put right here to get 13? Oh, man. Nothing really works. That's a whole number. Okay. If, and let's pretend land, I could put 13 over 2, right? So if I did 13 over 2, then that would give me, because 13 over 2 times 2 would be 13. But no fractions. Uh, so what can I do to get rid of this fraction? I can multiply everything by 2. So 1 times 2 would be 2. 13 halves by 2 would be 2. 4 times 2 is 8. And 2 times 5 is 10. I feel like I'm in second grade doing multiplication again. So my carbons now to check it are 8, 20. Yeah, it didn't, almost didn't turn out to be a 20. And then, ooh. Now remember when I did 13 halves times 2, that's not 2, that's 13. And my actions would be 26. And if I'm doubling 8, I get 16. Wait a minute, did I already double those? I did that, didn't I? I d doubled all those. So I have 8 carbons. I have 16 plus 10 is 26 oxygens. And my hydrogens are 10 times 2, which is 20. 8, 20, and 26 balances. Oh, how nice. Now that one's hard. That one might make you go, Mrrr. I'd rather just eat turkey. But if I look at this one, maybe this one will be back to easier. And A equals 1. N equals 1. O equals 3. Over here, Na equals 1. N equals 1. And O equals 4. So if I want to have these things balance, I look at this 3 right here, and there's only one spot for this. So what's going to happen is if I can get 6 right here by putting, a, say, a 2 right here, that would be 4 plus 2 would be 6. But that's not 3. So then what I can do is put a 2 over here, right? So that gives me two Na's, two N's, and six oxygens. So now my oxygens are better. But how do I get two Na's? Well, I'll put a 2 here. Gives me two Na's. Gives me two N's. And that gives me four plus four is eight oxygens. Oh, man. I only want six. But look, if I get rid of this and put a 1 here, you wouldn't write the 1, but just so we have it, we've got... Wait a minute. We have 2 times 2 is 4, plus 2 is 6. And we have joy. Yay. Whoa, that was too quick. So um, I've got to put a review slide on here. But the review slide is know how to balance reactions. And balancing equations shows the law of conservation of mass. Of mass by showing no atoms or mass are created or destroyed. So I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And enjoyed tons of food or whatever makes you happy in Thanksgiving, whether it's food or football or bad Thanksgiving music. And that's it. Toodles.